the Pied Pipers to a lot of angry people that don't really think too deeply themselves are saying it's virtue, virtue signalling, but without really being able to identify the virtue that's being signalled. Because <laughs> this, this, isn't a, this isn't a flag of anything. Hi Ramblers, Pete Donaldson here in the Ramble React Shed down the end of my garden. Now, I am not known on the Ramble for being the one with the best diet, let's say. The guys have seen me eat Chinese takeaways in the morning. They've seen me drink weird onion-based soups that I brought back from Tokyo uh, also in the morning. You name it, I've eaten it. And to be quite frank, I'm just too busy, you know, watching football, watching wrestling, talking about football, talking about wrestling, to make proper slap-up meals. However... Those days are behind me and my family, and it's all thanks to HelloFresh. In case you don't know what HelloFresh is, uh, they make home cooking easy. They deliver ingredients for over 100 different recipes every single month right to your door with all the different bits and pieces measured out so you can cook with no shopping and no hassle. And HelloFresh have changed the game for me and my waistline and my family. <laughs> They respect me. Uh, basically, the daily routine is set out for me. Uh, meal planning, I don't even have to think about it anymore. We've got variety. I'm inspired. Uh, there's convenience as well. Uh, bringing that all to my humble abode in Essex. But they are all really, really easy. Someone like me can do them. Step-by-step -step recipes. They take 25 minutes or less. You can even go super quick if you're out the door and you need something quick. Uh, there are some that take like 15 minutes. That is a bit of me, to be honest, because to be quite frank, wrestling has to be watched, football has to be watched. I've got to edit Gary Neville Gorgasm videos as well. Uh, and not only are these meals tasty and satisfy my very global palate, they are also budget-friendly. Starting at just £3.15 per serving, you can enjoy delicious meals without breaking that bank. Here's one of mine. I say mine. It's, it's one of Hello Freshers. It's in this box. I opened this with a cheese knife. I told you, I don't have a very good, I do not have a very good uh, diet. Let's see what's in here. I kind of already know, because I ordered it. Come on. Crusted bassa and buttery chive sauce. Step-by-step -step instructions, you've got um, all of the ingredients down the side in case you don't know what a potato looks like. And uh, also, um, all of the preparation uh, instructions and, and the recipe. Um, all like the nutrition values, if you're like, I don't know, cutting for a big fight. Uh, and you've got all the ingredients and they sort of scale up if there's more people to feed uh, in your house. So it's just, it's just cracking stuff. Cannot wait to eat this! As a HelloFresh customer, your plan is flexible. You can skip weeks, you can cancel your subscription at any time, or you can even change the number of recipes and servings for any given week at your convenience. So for crying out loud, get involved, do yourself a favour. You can now get 60% off your first box and 20% off the next two months plus free gifts. So all you have to do is enter the code RAMBLE60, that's RAMBLE and then 60 at hellofresh.co.uk forward slash RAMBLE60. That's www, we all those W's, hellofresh.co.uk forward slash RAMBLE60. You will find the link in the short description, so go get it. Or, even easier... You can just um, scan this QR code right here. Put it in there, Finn. <laughs> QR codes. <laughs> you like that? It's black and white. There's little dots on it. It's a QR code. Get yourself a bit of HelloFresh, yeah? Ramble 60. That's the code what matters. In fact, you can go and open that on another tab and you can order your boxes while you enjoy today's episode of the Football Ramble. It's as easy as that. So get those boxes and feast, my friends. We start with Wales's big win against Finland. Andy Brassel. They knew you were coming. They put on a show for you. Didn't they just? Mm. Didn't they just? It, it was 4-1, it was, it... of course. Yeah, and but, but it had a weird sort of rehearsal feel to it. Really? Because, of course, you know that they need to keep, keep a bit in the tank for, for, for Poland. And it was always going to be Poland. Yeah, and uh, not that they were assuming a win or anything like that. You know, the atmosphere was still... I always find it quite unusual when you go to a, a Wales game at uh, Cardiff City because it is it's a really great experience. Mm -hmm. But you look at the stadium from the outside and it doesn't feel like a, an inspiring sporting arena. And then you get in there yeah. and it feels and it's, oh my. That, like, like it's, it's, it's amazing. It's like a thousand times better 
them when they play at the but Millennium again, Stadium. I think they were all quiet. And they were going, hang on, he'll be here in a minute. <laughs> and then when he turned up, right! <laughs> Let's sing. Exactly. Well, they do sing better than any other fans in international football. It's remarkable. They look like a big, fun club that you really want to be a part of, don't, don't they? Like, yes. There's, there's a proper culture has grown around the travelling fans of, of, of Wales at, at international tournaments. And that's, a, that's such a... Such a brilliant thing. Yeah, I, I, I do agree with that. You're right to say about them singing. I did witness them play Portugal in Euro 2016 semi-final. Mm. And I think the Portuguese fans are quite underrated when it comes to international football with their singing and their chanting and their fist pumping. Interesting. It's unlike you to shit on Portugal there, Andy. Well, did I don't I? think he did. Well, I think he did. You okay. Run with me with this. You okay. <laughs> um, are you... Um, Going to apologise when you go back there. Because <laughs> we'll make sure they know what you said. Yeah. <laughs> Once I've got to the bottom of that lake and uh, got my dictaphone back so I can record an apology, Ooh, yes, there, I will. There we go. Yes, I will. Well, Wales um, got a big win. So did Portugal last night, by the way. But but uh, what a what a start it was. It um, was. But a it, lovely, lovely finish from Brooks. It, 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 was, it was amazing. The way he readjusted in midair to Ooh, finish that. Beautiful. Out. But having said that, the singing's still going. Finland are just like catching their breath after that. Mm -hmm. And Lukas Radetzky, who, bear in mind, is the goalkeeper for the Bundesliga leaders, the team who are going to win the Bundesliga. When he pushes out that shot from Harry Wilson... You thought that's poor. The, the thing is, Wilson has got an incredible left foot, but he's not really panelled that. And Radetzky pushes it out to pretty much the only place where he's Wales not, can score. But he's not going to hold it, though, is he? And if he pushes it... You know, as if um, more kind of in a hundred and eighty degree angle, then it's right across the face of the. No, but if he goal. if he pushes it mm -hmm. back where it came from or in the other direction, there's no other Wales player in sight. Is that not down to the pace of the move? Though? I was going to say because it was quite slick and and it, it felt really? like yeah, it felt like everything that Finland yeah, were doing defensively maybe. was reactive to what Wales were doing. Yeah, after I mean, three minutes. Yeah, it, yeah. yeah. I mean, obviously that defined the game. The fact that they scored really early in the first half and really uh, early in the second half. But that idea of it being a sort of rehearsal about being a way to work out kinks, it was funny because, as I say, the atmosphere is extraordinary at some mm. moments. At other moments, it dipped a little bit as if mines were elsewhere. And Wales defended in the first half. Mm -hmm. And, you know, they are, a, I think they're a much better team than they were at the last World Cup. Very much agreed. Mm -hmm. Much better. Yeah, they, they got look, rid of that they Gareth really Bale. good last night. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Holding um, them back, wasn't he? Anything? Well, I, I don't. Well, Towards the end, run, Towards he literally the end, run. Him, I actually agree with him. <laughs> uh, it's such a end. shame to say that about the best British player ever. Yeah, I, I yeah. don't. I mean, I, I see exactly what you're saying, but naturally, whenever these these things come about, other players come to the fore because they just have to play a, yeah. play a bit differently. You know, we see it with Spurs, for example, mm -hmm. in the way that Kane leaves, and suddenly yeah, you feel yeah, like, yeah, yeah. oh god, they, you know, everyone's scoring goals here. Is that, yeah, because you have to. Like everyone has to step no, up. No, but I think no. But the difference was is that at the end of Gareth Bale's career. I mean, oh yeah, just, certainly, like certainly. It was. It was, uh, but, but, uh, but, it was really but, quite sad. Yeah, yeah. but yeah. without Bale, I don't think Harry Wilson. You know, Brooks to an extent. Obviously, he came back from um, from cancer. You know, lymphoma mm -hmm. um, only in what, like the start of this season. Um, someone like Dan James, uh, even Necka Williams, to a point, mm -hmm. he kind of gave him a bit of space to. You know, working all right. Probably Ampadu is, is another good example of yeah. this. I think the basically other... gave the, took the pressure off them to a point. Didn't but it? but the other side of that is is the fact that if you're Wales, you have to be impeccable off the ball. Yes. Yeah, particularly yeah, at a major That's tournament, and, and right. you, you can't do that with Bale. And to be honest, probably Aaron Ramsey you, in yeah. in the team anymore. Uh, the, uh, there's a bit of luck involved in a sense of the timing of it all, which is that obviously the the players that were going to you know take take the place of Bale and Ramsey and. Uh, Players are a little bit more limited. Let's let's be honest. Are at least younger. You know, like yeah. all of these players have, have got their best years ahead of them now. Mm -hmm. They've always had a bit of a, an exuberance, a youthful exuberance about the the teams under Page and maybe say uh, before. I mean, we should apologise to Wales fans because we were already talking about Bale and, and, and so on. I mean, he's 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 long gone now. Actually, mm -hmm. really, this is it's not exactly the first game uh, without him. But it's it's a, it's a brilliant win. Um, the aforementioned Williams scored the pick of the goals, goal. and we are going to mention Gareth Bale just for a moment because I think this is a good home. He scored his free kick in that exact same spot two years ago when Wales beat Austria at the same stage of the playoffs. Yeah. And also, do you know, Dan heritage. James for that fourth goal. Oh, come on. Covered uh, more ground than Gareth Bale did in his last two <laughs> internationals. <laughs> Just two. I, I would I would go maybe six internationals. <laughs> that was brilliant. I love it? it. It's the most Dan James it goal is. possible. Only he can road runner. That. Yeah, yeah, because no other forward would think, I'm not going to press. We're 3-1 up. Yeah. Right? The defender's got the, the, the ball. He's in his own half. There is no danger here. And Dan James is going... 
Well, it's just a little. I could, I Hang could get it. Hang on a minute. This guy's not seen my party trick. <laughs> <laughs> it was the way the defender looks over his right shoulder, sees James about twenty yards away. Yeah, he's like, it's okay. L- looks back to the keeper, looks around again. And says, oh, he's not there because he's on his other <laughs> side. <laughs> <laughs> it's, a, it's, it's like a horror movie, isn't it? It was yeah, absolutely brilliant. Yeah. Well, maybe Wales were were so pumped for this game because of uh, Rhys Iffens' uh, pre-match uh, team talk. Did you see this? Jack? I did. Rousing. Yeah, the the, the famous actor, of course, in. Um, uh, I can only think of Notting Hill. He's in lots of things. He is in lots of yeah, things. Yeah, Spider Man. He's, he's, he's in the that's importance of being idle. The Oasis video. So that was probably the finest achievement. Oh yeah. There we go. Yeah. Of, of his career. And he, I unlike in Notting Hill, he wasn't just in his pants. <laughs> that's right. But his speech, I think it's um, you, you know, a number of people would have seen this. I think it would have been more rousing if he'd just been in his pants. <laughs> yeah. But, oh no. If he starts, <laughs> it, if he starts it fully clothed. <laughs> yes. And, yeah. uh, and by the end, every pause. Yeah. It, it's you know, it's brilliant. You should seek it out. But every pause, he just takes mm. off an item of. Clothing. But then, of course, and he ends with just his pants on because there will be slight relief, I think, from the players, yeah. and and no, nobody could press charges. <laughs> 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 but you know, it's a, a very um, rousing, as opposed to a rousing speech. A bit of both. And well, I, I would say so. I, I watched that speech and I was like, I want to play for Wales. Um, I, some might say it was slightly over the top with some of the historical references. I'm, I'm not sure. I, I very much enjoyed it, but I do think that they they've gone big. Big for early, this, for this they've, semi-final. They've already had Michael Sheen. They had about during the World Cup, that yeah. was. Um, but that's what I mean. It's, you, you know, you, you're going to use him again? Maybe not. So well, what, what are you saying? Tom Jones for the final? Now you're talking. John Cale to just say nothing for one <laughs> <laughs> I think Tommy Jones to just sit there and they go, right, uh, Tom, we, we are kicking off in 10 minutes. You're going to have to say something. Ooh. <laughs> and, then, uh, and then he goes, sex bomb, sex bomb. No, Tom, <laughs> this is a... F- <laughs> Anthony Hopkins? No, oh, oh. come on! Surely, surely that's your headliner. I reckon. I reckon you've got to keep. You got to keep a Hopkins in the chamber for the knockout stages, don't you? Yeah. Keep him in the chamber the with a mask on. As yeah, well. maybe a little. There's bit. a difference between motivation <laughs> and terror. I think. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Oh, he What's he down doing? To just I'll some... fucking eat you if you don't yeah. win this. Oh, you, oh, maybe... He's having a bowl of spaghetti. <laughs> you have Hopkins do a spoken word verse yeah. and Tom Jones belt out a chorus. Love it. Oh. It's an inspiring sort of musical. What number. about Robbie Savage? What about him? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hello, Savage. Have and we? Then, uh... <laughs> and leave him to Anthony. Have they done Charlotte Church yet? Or is she more I rugby? I don't think so. Ah, oh, good point. Uh, she, I think she's very patriotic. Yeah. So yeah. they should get her involved. <laughs> All right, Jim. That's what I think. An oddly sort of um, I'm, politician I'm, type answer. You know, I'm, just, I'm up necessary. for casting this this ongoing um, pre-match inspirational talk. I suppose I think we thing, should have it as well. The thing is, if you go too high, mm-hmm. then naturally the fall when things don't go well is is you know quite stark. So maybe when it, if they do get you know if they don't make it through next week or if they mm-hmm. do disappoint in the Euros, they should bring Gareth Bale back to come in and be like, no, it's all right, isn't it? Mm. There's always the next one. Golf club in hand. Yeah. It, it is. Let's have 18 holes. Yeah. Forget about it. it Why has Craig Bellamy got a golf club? <laughs> <laughs> like I said, I always felt they're kind of like 75% in. Like it was it was a great night. It was a good performance mm-hmm. that they know could do with a little bit of tweaking. Because yep. if they defend like they did in the first half, yep. they're in trouble. But, even... I think, but they, they tightened that up at half time. You've got a sense that the wing backs had more of a sense of their defensive responsibility. So as well as being... A really good occasion that was a rehearsal for a great occasion. Yeah, it was a pretty good performance, which was a rehearsal for a, the sort of performance that they probably think they will need to get there. Yes, well, of course they do play Poland on um, Tuesday. Who they are better than, by the way? Yes, and they're at home, of course, Wales. Yeah, and that makes a massive difference. Which which we, we would think would make a a massive old um, difference. So uh, yes, um, elsewhere in the in the playoffs last night. Luxembourg were away to Georgia. Now, they lost the game 2-0. There was an extraordinary passage of play, which lasted for about four minutes, which if you haven't seen, try and seek it out. I think you'll find it on Twitter, probably. Um, where Georgia are one goal up, and there's a ball over the top, their man runs onto it, and is fouled, um, and, and it's always inside the box or outside the box. And apparently a VAR check is um is being conducted but it's not given and the game continues luxembourg go up the other end and equalize and celebrate as if they've just scored a last minute winner okay but fine that's up that's you know they they celebrate how they want so they they go absolutely crazy one all you know huge goal for them and then that sort of begins to calm down and because a few minutes has gone past and then the referee suddenly goes hang on hang on i'm getting called in in the ear here 
goes over to the screen, disallows the Luxembourg goal, and it's a question of is it a penalty or is it not? <clears throat> it's deemed outside the box, but it's a straight red card. So Luxembourg go from being in a position where they think, right, one all, we're back into it. To I know now you're down to ten men, and that's you're all you're a goal down, and that's probably the game up, which of course it, it would subsequently be. Gutting. I mean, just the, yeah. yeah. I think there has to be if there's a VAR check like that. And it's and it's um, it looks like a very very tricky one to call. You, you've surely just got to it's, stop it's, the game. It's like a far more extensive version of when a really late flag comes, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. But you've, you've got to blow the whistle. You've got to say, "Hang on a minute," because that passage of place, it's just the emotions. Yeah, you, you kind of need counselling after that, don't you? <laughs> yeah, you do. Yeah. And it was made all the worse by the fact that it was raining. <laughs> something, something about the rain added added to it. Rainy oh, night in Georgia, etc. Yeah. yeah. Oh dear. Anyway, let's get away from those playoffs uh, and let's talk about the friendlies. Or as my old manager used to say, I don't believe in friendlies. It's a challenge match. Um, so England face Brazil in a challenge match uh, tomorrow evening at Wembley at seven. England. I do, I do prefer that. He's he's got something there. Yeah, he thought it was some psychological thing that us ten year olds would respond yeah. to. <laughs> <laughs> my goodness, we did, Jim. We never you, lost you, one. Yeah, you are a very aggressive, competitive <laughs> man now, aren't you? Uh, so apparently probably, so. Um, probably so, from that. Yeah. Well, um, England are unbeaten in their last three meetings with Brazil. The most recent one being a nil nil draw at Wembley. That was ahead of the 2018 World Cup. I was there. It was a rather you boring saw game. It. Yes. <laughs> so I'm hoping uh, tomorrow is a better game. Jim, you sort of said England should have someone doing pre-match team talks. Who would you fancy? Matt Berry, Matt, off the top of my head. Yep. Yeah, you're going to mm -hmm. have to... Some people might not know who Matt Berry is. Uh, Matt Berry is a comic actor <coughs> uh, with a very, very silly voice, um, has a lot of presence, um, very sort of kind of camp you, and vampish. Do, can you do a little impression? Um, not really. I've heard you do an impression and it's um, possible. I don't know that... Go on, England, get out there and do it. Yeah, it's more... Dempsey, that isn't it? That's more Paul Dempo Dempsey. Uh, that was, do you know Matt what that was? Berry that was a bit. Um, yeah, X. That's, that's good. That what about good. the guy who does X Factor voiceovers? Peter Dixon. Yeah, yeah, him. Get out there, England. Actually, that would be good. I tell you who would be good. Tom Skinner. Right, ladies, you're representing uh, the free lines. Uh, no, I can see that happening, and I'd hate it. Yeah. I'd hate that. Concept. Get out there, win the game for us, a bush. Can I yeah. put forward Gemma Collins? Nope. Yeah, the only time I've ever seen Ben White look happy was uh, in yeah. a video with, with Gemma Collins. He chased but, after her, didn't he? Yeah, tells you a lot <laughs> about the star power that she has. <laughs> yeah. All right, I would Holland. love that. <laughs> then maybe she'd fall down a hole yeah. like she did at that award ceremony. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, I think we're all agreed now England shouldn't have a pretty much team talk by anyone it's other too divisive. It's too divisive. Even we can't agree. <laughs> yeah, well... Yeah. Should we get this out of the way then? Talking yeah, of let's do it. Yeah. Let's do it. Um, the New England kit. Um, the, the St. George's Cross has um, had a playful update, according to Nike. Um, oh, you, perhaps you've seen this on the back of the collar of, um, well, I think both shirts, but the, the, the one in sort of that was on question on social media was, uh, was the home shirt in particular. The horizontal line of the cross is not its usual red. It's a mixture of navy, light blue, and a sort of a, pinky sort of mauvey kind of colour. Um, this has uh, just caused everybody to... to, to have have no, not everybody, out. actually. It's caused uh, a number of people to have a bit of a ding-dong about this. I like the New England kits. I particularly like the Away kits. I think the Away kit's the nicest England kit of years, and it's, it's a shame a... that this is what's being spoken about instead of that, because yes. I think it's brilliant. But I think it's also a shame that uh, a, a, a huge company decided to give a nation's flag a playful update. Now, the FA did agree to this. Mm. You know, and I can understand why people are a bit like, "Hang on, it's, you shouldn't mess with the country's it's a country's really flag." Odd choice. It's a, it's a, it's a strange thing to do. I don't think they should have done it. I haven't lost a wink of sleep. <laughs> yeah. You'll be pleased to yes. know about this, and I suspect that that is probably what most people's opinions are about this. Yeah, but it's uh, <laughs> it's, it's attracted some dickheads. It has from like the, <laughs> the, you know the, the usual suspects. You not being one of them. Jim. Thank, thank you. The, the the sort of vocal minorities that are sort of you know are kind of like the Pied Pipers to a lot of angry people that don't really think too deeply themselves are saying it's virtue, virtue signalling, but without really being able to identify the virtue that's being signalled. Because <laughs> this, this, isn't a, this isn't a flag of anything, is yeah, it? It's yeah. just different colours um, in the shape of the St George's flag. And the, the 2011 England kit had um, different coloured uh, crosses on it as well, you may remember, really? on, the, on the shoulders as well. So we, we've seen, seen this happen before. And I, I just... The reason Knight gave is because it was a nod. They said on the, the sleeve trims it was a nod to the 
the England 1966 training kit. Yeah, which is very specific. And it strange. is. And it's also a bit naff. Yeah, yeah. It is naff. Yeah. 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 But I think a lot of um, <clears throat> a lot of design choices are, are made with these sort of things in mind. Well, the, well, and, the, and you never realise that yeah. well, well, as a sort of, you know, consumer. On the Away kit with the kind of the panels down the side, there's a, there's a, there's a splash of colour there. Yeah. And it was apparently a nod to the, the, the fashionistas and those who kind of... And it's just it's like... That's exactly what I'm talking about. Yeah. yeah. It's like, don't explain it. Just say, well, we fancied just as an other bit. Yeah. All right, I, okay. I quite like it having... having Having a point oh, in the I don't mind that as, well. It, as, as well, but yeah. it, it's you know I think the people that are sort of taking umbrage with this um, know that actually it isn't virtue signalling. This this mm. these colours don't mean anything, but it's a very very easy way to to whip up um, some anger yeah. in a tedious and um, frankly damaging culture war, and we're seeing more and more of it. And it's just it's just a big shame. The England kit is now a culture war. Well, the funny thing, the well, I mean, the the thing I find amusing about it is it feels like it's you know the, the colours have elicited a reaction in those dickheads because it you know it points to mm-hmm. I suppose other issues where they're quite strident on you know unreasonably strident on, um, <laughs> but I think it's also it was also triggered by Nike's tweet about it yeah where they referred to it as a playful update yeah that was a bit sloppy and uh, on the colour to unite and inspire. But to my mind, those those types of people read playful and they were like, oh, I don't want anything playful in our country. Uh. And also the idea of like to unite and inspire being something that has been used to bring communities together is yeah. exactly the kind of thing they dislike. Divide and conquer. To Which a point, yeah. Because that, that, that is the whole point of an international football team. Exactly, yeah. yeah. Anyway, yeah. well, look, uh... let's hope that uh, um, that's all forgotten about very quickly. Just being angry at the idea of something meaning something. Yeah, but it yeah. does. Yeah, 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 incredible. Um, stuff. Silly note. Bring back Umbro, eh, hey, Andy? Come <laughs> yeah, on. There we go. There, there we was, go. There's some of the some of the comments under that like night. It, I suppose it wasn't a clarification tweet; it was an explaining tweet. Yeah. But some of the comments being like, "Well done. We won't be buying this." And I was like, "Mate, do you know how few people actually buy a New England kit?" Yeah, you well, don't at, worry about it. At, They're not at, that worried. At full price, certainly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> I was like, yeah. You're, you're an idiot. And by the way, just in case anybody's not sure of the admin, it, this kit was conceived two years ago. The FA did sign it off. So yeah. They are complicit. And uh, if they were to kind of go, all right, we'll recall them and then send out a load, it would probably take about six to nine months, apparently. Yeah. So this is this is what we've got. So it's like it or lump it or all the England players wear a neck brace when they're wearing their away kit, basically. Yeah, yeah. good idea, Andy. And I think that's uh, a snood. No doubt these people would love to bring the snood back. Anyway, we're getting off the topic. England versus Brazil tomorrow. It's a big one. Um, Brazil have a new manager, Dorival Jr. Um, he has been their new manager since January. Did you see the interview that he did in The Guardian? I did. It was Some very... The, um, I, th- I loved it. Very frank. Yeah, he's a really interesting character. Seems very happy to be there, but also really, really sort of... Uh, straight talking mm. and emotionally quite honest. It, there's yes. some really revealing stuff in there. He, he said there's something like between 1,500 and 1,600 Brazilian players playing at away from Brazil now, mm-hmm. which is an extraordinary number, it isn't is. it? Really, really extraordinary. And talks about how the national team is 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 very, very different from how it used to be. He says for, this has been going on reason, for 10 years yeah, or for, more. For, exactly, yeah. He's not suddenly realised this. And how, you know, when the, when the players come back to play for Brazil, they play the game and then they're off back to their clubs, obviously, because they have oh. to be. So, you know, they, they, they don't, they're not around when the impact of the national team is happening mm. anymore. He's, he's not criticising anybody, et cetera, et cetera. But it was a really sort of honest and mm-hmm. frank is he um, not? explanation. No, it, it didn't I, come no, across I, I didn't think like that. I think, he's, I think he's saying, if you look at what we just talked about, Wales there, trying to galvanise every, you know, everybody. And we've seen this with, with a number of teams. If he's trying to do that, he's maybe thinking, OK, there are things. I mean, Eddie Jones said this about the England rugby team. He said that any rugby team that he's managed before, he knew that there were certain touch points. He was like, oh, yeah, I can start talking about this. Or there's this 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 kind of strand of of chat or whatever you want to say. Um, and he found England, the England team, the hardest to try and kind of get a sense of that Englishness. Now, we know in England they've... they've, they've... Eddie, Eddie, we should also clarify, Eddie Jones is the bellend. Yeah, fine, but I'm, yeah. but he's but he's an incredibly um, uh, prominent figure in the in a, in, a, in a in the sport of rugby and and has reached a couple of rugby uh, World Cup finals. But yes, there's no doubt yeah. what you just said. I'm not it's the, the only thing England England and, <laughs> England and Australia can agree on. <laughs> <laughs> and I think it comes from a place of of just having no empathy whatsoever. Oh yeah. Whereas yeah. I don't think Dorval comes off in that way. No, no, I well, don't I'm, either. I would, and, I would and, disagree. And so that, to actually. finish my point is that you know sometimes it can be quite difficult. I mean, you say about the players. Look at Andres. Pereira, I'm, you know, Fulham midfielder, of course. Mm. I don't think he's even lived in Brazil. He grew up yeah. in Belgium, actually, mm. but he chose to play for Brazil. So perhaps in, in some of the more traditional ways of trying to, to, to bring a squad together emotionally or whatever, 
maybe he's sort of suggesting that. I don't... Yeah, so. you, get, you I, get players like Endrick, like, leaving as teenagers, Vinicius Junior, mm-hmm. left really young, didn't he? But... I, th- I think he's creating a massive rod for his own back here. Because the thing is, he's come to power basically because Carlo Ancelotti kind of left them in the lurch. They thought they were getting in for ages. And so they've gone for this, I guess, like the CBF would say, unity candidate. Mm-hmm. But he's honestly, like, probably about, what, third, fourth, fifth choice. And he set himself up on, yeah, we need to be more Brazilian. We need to pick more homegrown players. And, like, the way that football works, that's just totally that's not impossible. What he said. That didn't sound no, like but, what no, but uh, you, this, you're talking about one interview. Okay, so I'm he talking, said this I'm otherwise. talking about every single press conference he's, give, that he's given before right. and since mm-hmm. taking the job, which is we need to be more Brazilian, we need to have more home based players. And it's like, how? How? So is he is he touching on a on a bit of a political point there? Is that is this almost like a manifesto, you know, a, a point in terms of something that he's decided to bring to the table? Yeah, a little bit, a, 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 a little bit. bit of favor. And well. I, I think it, I think it's really interesting because Brazil, I think, are in quite a bad place at the moment. Well, that's what he's addressing. Yeah, and but but he's part of that. He's part of that. Yeah, but just join them, Andy. No, but it, the, the fact that he's got the job. Is like really a manifestation of the fact that is he they're the big not Sam in the of Brazil. Do you oh, well, he, he <laughs> uh, might be yeah, the South of Brazil. Anyway, so so it bodes well for Brazil that England have got injuries. Bakayo Saka is out uh, of the squad completely. Yep. I can't help but look at Michael Mar- Arteta and think, what are you, what are are you, you scheming here? Yeah, you know, it, it might be like William Saliba's toe injury. <laughs> break. Gabriel's out. Seems, yeah, Gabriel's out as well. Ben White didn't fancy it. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, yeah. Um, you know how like Gianluca Vialli used to find the Chelsea players if they didn't wear sliders in the shower? I do you, not know do, do you reckon, like, because, you know, if you, you could damage your feet, do you reckon for the last week before international break, that all, the, all the coaches are like, yeah, just barefoot this week, lads. Yeah, <laughs> no, no, um, no aftershave though. Remember? Yeah, yeah exactly. Oh yeah, Declan Rice had to pull out with a veruca. <laughs> 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 well, Harry Kane um, has twisted his ankle, and uh, he is unlikely to start against Brazil. It's fair. I, I like to... that. There's none of this cynicism for Saint Harry. <laughs> well, he's there, isn't he? Threw himself into the post. Oh, theatrical. What was Kane. what was very amusing is how the the the, the sporting director of of, of Bayern. Uh, Christoph Freund, he was asked about it after the, the game against Darmstadt where he injured himself last week. And he's like, we're in uh, constant contact with the uh, English FA about uh, Harry's condition at the moment. And it was hilarious because, of course, Bayern are used to ruling the roost. And they're yeah. like, we're in a situation, actually, where we have the England captain, he was saying, reading between the lines, where actually we've got no influence on this. They're going to do what they fucking like. <laughs> and if he wants to play, he's going to play and there's nothing we can do about it. Yeah, that's why he's St. Harry. Mm. And I don't know any other Arsenal players currently plotting their trade who have got a statue either. No. Did you see the uh, the the um, images have been finally released of this uh, statue that was supposed to be installed at Chingford Station in, is Chingford in London or Essex? It's East London. It's yeah. East London, yeah. Uh, we, I've, we talked about this before. <clears throat> and, Probably in uh, the hinterland where it's a little bit of both. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think of the statue? I think it looks like it has been created to um, frighten children uh, <laughs> as an example of the man that will come and get you if you eat too much chocolate. Yeah, because he looks like he's made of chocolate. In this. Yeah, yes. that's a good point. And he's You're, massive. He looks a little, the head looks a little bit Van Hal. I know what yeah. you mean. Yeah. Mm. Um, if Harry Kane doesn't start, who would you fancy? Well, this is this is interesting because the week before I returned from India, <laughs> I very much enjoyed the quite colourful debate mm. had here between maybe yourself and Luke, or mm-hmm. maybe between Luke and himself. Um about <laughs> the colours were just white and red, to be clear. No virtue signaling here. Yeah, well, exactly, yeah, yeah. Um but, but it was um essentially about around how Watkins should should get the nod because of what he's done this yes, season. That was Luke's argument, definitely. and and a very, very understandable. And, uh, yeah, point. totally. Um, so, and I, I kind of agree with that. Actually, I, I do prefer Ivan Tony, but I, I do think actually Watkins has shown us something. Mm-hmm. Not so much with his goals, actually, but maybe more with his link-up play. What his double-figure assists in the league is in yeah. the moment. He's all, he's, he's all across it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, and he clearly has gone up a level um, for Villa, and he's a large part of the reason why they are fighting for that Champions League spot. I think it's it, it, this is actually quite a big deal. Mm-hmm. I don't necessarily put too much stock in friendlies, but with with someone like Harry Kane out, mm-hmm. this is basically the clearest in, indication we're going to get in terms of the you know who, who 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 is the alternate for a key position. Yeah, yep. 
and I think on current form it should be Watkins. But is this really important? Because to, to me, I it's... think it is important for South because it's Southgate having to make a clear cut decision. Yeah. I, 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 I think I, it's I a see big your decision, point. Andy. I see your point, but the fact is, Kane is going to play in the Euros. There are much bigger questions in terms of defence and midfield, which, which they've, get to, they've got very little time to work out. Okay, I, I, w- I would also say if we come to a situation in the summer where Harry Kane gets injured and can't play a couple of games, mm-hmm. my first choice would be come home. <laughs> <laughs> all right. All right. And yep. in lieu of that, yep. you know, I'll, yeah, I'll, delay, I'll, the, I'll so delay the tournament. Yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. If Saka's yeah. not playing, Jim, who would you like to see flanking Watkins or Tony? That is a good question. Phil Foden presumably would be well, one of them. Yeah, but do you the, switch the him onto the right? I was I was hoping to see that front three um, of Kane in the middle, Saka on the on the right, and Foden on the left. So I, I, I'd be sad to see Foden on the right because we know he can play there, but um, would presumably in the tournament if mm-hmm. everyone's fit, he'd start on the left. So wouldn't mind see Jared Bowen giving a go there. Mm-hmm. Jared Possibly Bowen Cole Palmer. It. I think probably Palmer actually because I think with Palmer. If you're going to play him, you're going to have to shoehorn him in some way uh-huh. um, at the moment. I mean, Palmer's and down as a he, midfielder. He probably. is, but he he I think his form demands inclusion. So actually, this is a really good opportunity to get a look at him. Mm. Um, James Madison is obviously in there as well. Some yep. people would love to see him. I think Bowen would be played off the right if he was if he was going to play. You know, when you get a feeling about a player, Andy, and I think there are some players who doesn't matter what they're doing for the club, whether they're playing well or okay, but they put on the national team jersey and suddenly it sort of really really happens. I wonder if Anthony Gordon might be someone like that. Yeah, a little bit. Even though he's playing very well for his club. No, because because he's a prominent player for Newcastle. Yeah, Not that sure. Verizon for Verizon himself, but but do you know what I mean? What, what do you think? Do you think maybe we could see Anthony Gordon at some? But point? Gordon has been really really good this season. Yes, yeah. no, no. Again, I stress that for club he's. I but I, 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 I think he feels to me like a bit of Southgate as well because yes. because he's extremely useful when he hasn't got the ball as well. Yes, yeah. that's, that's he's, exactly he's, it. Yeah. He's an absolute. Pain in the arse. Other mm. players hate him, but you can see ass. why. Not his teammates. They like him, presumably. Mm. <laughs> yeah. 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 You guess so. Now they you? like him. Yeah. yeah, this is. So the other questions are who will be in the midfield with Rice and Bellingham? Um, uh, although perhaps not because we might get into a Jordan Henderson debate there. Let's talk about the defence then. Joe Gomez has been, um, uh, been 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 speaking quite a bit about his time when he was previously uh, in the England squad and obviously got that injury and he's, he's come back. And a player that I'd kind of forgotten about, obviously there was that ruckus with Raheem Sterling, but that seems like water under the bridge, especially Sterling's not even there, but, but even if he was, I don't think that would matter. A um, lot of injuries. Could we see him starting any of these because because a number of years ago Stones and Gomez looked like the, the two for England now you are going back a number of years here so I, it, perhaps it's not even worth saying that I think if we were to see um, Stones maybe go into the midfield whether that happens or not I, I think that Southgate has got Gomez as a centre half in mind much more than a fullback even though he's played fullback at more for, for Liverpool perhaps you might disagree though maybe I, I think if, if we're talking about pushing Stones into midfield we're getting into the area of risk that maybe yeah. Southgate doesn't fully embrace like seeing it from his yeah. perspective. So you think Gomez would be would be cover then at the back? Yeah, maybe. Where uh, though? I, I, Where? I think I think in terms of in terms of this, well, I think you've got the option, haven't you? Mm. I, I think to to see Gomez play and play well would be I, I think would be really good for England yep. because he's he's in great form at the moment. Yeah. He's, he's in really great form at the moment, and I think with all the defensive issues that England have got in terms of form and fitness, getting him in, making him feel important and part of it, I, I think he's, he's, he's really a key part of this I, international I think, break. Yeah, and, we do, and England are playing Belgium, of course, on Tuesday. So yeah, there, there is another game there. Games. There's there's and, and Belgium are no yeah. mugs. I think we're all looking at Brazil thinking that's obviously the, the glamorous one, which it is. But as I say, Belgium is not... Uh, um, Belgium are arguably better than Brazil at the moment. <sighs> there you go. Yeah. There you go. All right, everybody, coming up in the second half, we've got France versus Germany. Oh, and San Marino will be with you in just a moment. Good morning, good. Can you tell us something your mum doesn't know? Yeah. Oh. Right, welcome back to the Football Ramble, everybody. Andy Brassel, read that email, damn you. Uh, I've got one from Alex Lovelace here. It says, well, one for the absolute football nerds like myself. Why am I reading this out? I uh, emailed a few <laughs> years ago providing a rare occurrence of Luke Moore actually liking a listener's idea to change football. <laughs> a World Cup for teams outside the top 100 in the world ranking. I wanted to let you know that FIFA are actually doing something kind of similar during the current international break. Mm. This week sees the FIFA series 
taking place, oh my God, in various places around the world for the first time with six mini tournaments happening between a bunch of unfashionable countries. Bring on Bolivia versus Andorra, Azerbaijan versus Mongolia and Guinea versus Vanuatu or sit with England versus Brazil and Euro playoffs. But hey, at least there's a few more options for matches to watch this weekend. How about that? Yeah, this is an interesting one. FIFA... Um, the FIFA series is a new competition designed to give national teams more opportunities to play against opponents from outside their respective confederations. So there's 24 national teams involved playing across five different countries. All six federations are involved. And where the um, the, the host nations are Algeria, Azerbaijan, Egypt, Saudi Arabia, A, Saudi Arabia, B, um, and Sri Lanka. Whee. Whee. Yeah. So in Sri Lanka's group, they've got Bhutan, which is not that far away, but still, you know, it's nice to have a bit of local um, rivalry in there. Central African Republic and Papua New Guinea. Brilliant. Bring them on. It's like FIFA have looked at the lower leagues of the UEFA Nations League mm. and gone, oh, we want some of that. Well, <laughs> do, do you think that the, the, the Egypt one is, is quite tasty? You've got Croatia, Egypt. New Zealand and Tunisia. It's a strange one, that. I'm describing that as tasty. It feels, I won't it read feels the other like one. like a World Cup group. Yeah. Like yeah. a yeah. weird World yes. Cup group, but it yeah. does. Yeah. It's yeah, yeah, just yeah. what the world needs. More competitive international football. More competitive football. Yeah. What I find strange, though, Andy, in Saudi Arabia A and Saudi Arabia B, um, Saudi Arabia aren't playing. <laughs> really? Is that yeah. right? Yeah. They've got Cambodia, Cape Verde, Equatorial Guinea, um, Guyana, Bermuda, <laughs> B- Brunei, Guinea, and Vanuatu. That's so you're going to say, they... why was it there? You know why it's there. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> because it can be there. I mean, basically, we can talk about the the ties and the content, but it's not about any of that. This is just the FIFA versus UEFA willy waving contest <laughs> for which um, the general public and the players are paying the bill, and it's pretty disgusting. Oh, what a shame. Well, was it? Um, it's not always disgusting when you see um, two minnows playing each other in a friendly Andy. No, it's not. But I, I, that, 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 this isn't what we're talking about. We're talking about not the actual... It's, it's like the Super League. We're not talking about the tournament itself. We're talking about the right to brand football, the right to own football, mm. and to hell with the consequences of the people who watch it and play sure. it. Sure. I was trying to segue to San Marino versus St. Kitts. Okay. Though. I'm sorry for <laughs> shitting on that. <laughs> I'm not that sorry. Yeah. St. Ke- Kitts and uh, Nevis this week. Yes. Uh, despite going into the game as favourites, San Marino lost... Um, oh, everyone was really up for this. They, they thought there was a big chance. 137 <laughs> matches without a win now. They do uh, have another bite of the cherry against St. Kitts and Nevis but, again. But they angered the football gods. On I mean, they, they did all these interviews and yeah, what was articles that about? going, oh, we're going to win for the first time in 10 years. Silly. Why would you do that if Silly. you haven't won yeah. in 10 Sit years? Sit down, you little yeah. mugs. If you are San Marino, like, you just... You can't possibly have any idea of what your level is, right? No. And they've really fallen afoul of that there. Yeah, very strange. Uh, they do, as I say, though, they've got them again. So uh, it, it was, that a, was that a rematch option? If we lose, then we Im- immediately trigger the rematch option. I don't know. Uh, France versus Germany, Saturday evening. This summer's hosts are travelling to Lyon to face France. The, uh, the, the side that are many people's favourites for the tournament, Andy Brassel, it doesn't get much bigger than this. Well, I think the interesting thing about France is not only uh, France and England quite difficult to separate in terms of who's favourite for the tournament, but a lot of the personnel problems that England have yeah. are similar to the personnel problems that, yes. that France have Yes, at the moment. I just think that... The... So basically, we might as well not analyse this. Let's just talk about uh, Kane, Bellingham and Bappe and call it a day. Yeah, well, I, I'm, I'm glad to hear you say that because I always think about France and I, and I mean, the, the World Cup was testament to this, is that they have some, some big players injured and then they just say, all right, okay, who's next? And they just kind of yeah. slot in. And but it's, yeah. it's, it's form as well. So like Gareth, South, Gareth Southgate always gets talked about because of his conservatism. In a similar way, Didier Deschamps, it's, it's like all international coaches really, they're all conservative with a small C to a certain extent. Yeah. And he doesn't really want to turn over. He wants to be loyal to people. And he's got his Harry Maguire question, if you like, because Dio Pumacano is really not having a good season uh-huh. for, for Bayern. They've got a lot of defensive issues as as, as well. So they're, they're, they're in a similar place. Having said that, Germany have really need to get their ducks in a row to put even a decent display together. It's I mean, they're not winning Euro 2024. They're definitely not winning Euro 2024. He's written off the Germans. Mm. Although, in recent years, that's not... Yeah, but foolish. the Germans aren't oh, yeah. the Germans. Definitely not with a capital T and a capital G. 
at the moment. Oh, I didn't think they would be. No. Um, yeah. I Because yeah, that was the thing, wasn't it? Never write off the Germans. Indeed. But then, of course, you know. In recent... But look what we're doing. It's, it's on home soil. They want to, you know, they want to bring back the feel-good factor of, of 2006, the, the, the World Cup that they hosted there. Not so much I that they're think... appointing Jürgen Klinsmann's coach. Well, no, of Get course Get in. <laughs> but they didn't win that tournament, so Andy's point still stands. Yeah. <laughs> no, true. But they, they are in a... They are in a in a sort of set of doldrums that we've not seen Germany in in our in our life. No, I think that's fair to say, yeah. So I th- I don't think actually I think Germany can have a successful tournament without winning it. If that makes sense. Yeah, no, I think yeah, no, that, they, that they makes need a lot Euro of sense. Ninety six almost. No, I, I I think if they were to replicate that sort of glorious failure of of um, World Cup two thousand and six, everyone would be very happy with that. Fischer's got a smirk on his face. Well, I was just. I mean, they did win Euro ninety six. Yeah, I, I, I know yeah, you yeah, meant yeah, from yeah, the so English of perspective, of course. Yeah, yeah. Um, I I find it quite funny that Tony Cruz has come back Mm. because I I feel like players of that ilk, when they walk away, they walk away like, thank you for all your service. My work here is done. Yeah, all the things you've accomplished. And the idea that they had to, you know, in some way go back to him and be like, but we've got nothing. (laughs) You've you've left a chasm that actually is your fault and you have to come back and film it. So Uh. Stefan Effenberg's on the phone. No. (laughs) (laughs) No. Yeah, he's probably still banned, isn't he? I would think so. Yeah, um, Jürgen, for everyone's pick... sake, I hope so. <laughs> Jürgen, turn on the video on your Zoom for fuck's sake. <laughs> <laughs> One of the other problems for Germany is that there's been some criticism of their new pink away kit, which was revealed last week. Uli Hoeneß um, has had his ha- uh, say on this. He said, all these things are nonsense. They can even play with a naked torso and something painted on. Huh? Something. That's very, very liberal Very views. vague. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, yeah, a, a, a pink away kit is, is that would be Germany's equivalent of what we spoke about in the yeah, I mean, <laughs> in the England kit. I yeah. think it's quite nice. Yeah, well, it's, it's, a yeah. Colour. It's, probably, it's, it's a colour. It's a colour. Why are people angry but... at colours? Well, Jim, don't get me started on pink. <laughs> like, do you know what I mean? Like literally, yeah. it's what are the acceptable colours now? All of them. <laughs> <laughs> that you would say that. Yeah, you would, wouldn't you? Yeah, well, typically uh, not not at once. No. Email in not if you've got. A, <laughs> you know, if you have to give us a colour. We can I tell you. Can't if it's stand the colour blue. <laughs> yeah, I mean, obviously Germany are enamoured with it enough that they announced uh, yesterday that they're defecting from Adidas to Nike. <gasps> They did, didn't they? But there you oh, go. Yeah. Oh, yeah. The, um, the, the, the advert for the Germany kit is brilliant, though, because it, it kind of riffs on the typical, oh, this is a typical German kit. And is that right? The whole advert yeah. goes through about like, all the yeah, things that are good. now typical Germany that are actually atypical Germany, that kind of see, stuff. is brilliant, yeah. Um, well, let's turn our attention to France uh, because um, Thierry Henry said this week about killing Mbappe. Mbappe has already surpassed my legacy. But Antoine Griezmann, or Griezmann, should I say, is by far the most underrated player ever. Ever is big, isn't it? But I, I he's very underrated. He is my favourite non-Vardy footballer. Um, <laughs> yep, Antoine Griezmann. Uh-huh. He's brilliant to watch, and he he's, he scores loads of goals. He's you know he's been very successful. Um, but I think Henri's right. You know, I don't think he's he's kind of put in the top bracket of of, of world footballers very often, and he absolutely belongs there. I was going to throw this to you, Andy, because the thing I've been confused about recently is why France are in, and maybe it comes from, you know, what's happened in the last couple of tournaments, but I don't understand why suddenly French football is having this legacy conversation about these players. Like, what is it because like someone like Griezmann's coming to the end of his career or it's, generally it's, it's because, like the generation's about to move on? It's because, I think, it's as simple as the fact that you've got three at the top of the top scorers list of all time. So right. uh, you've got uh, Olivier Giroud, and they're all buzzing around Thierry Henry, of course. Uh, Griezmann could go up there for a little bit, and you know that Mbappe's going to go past yeah. everyone all in time. So it's very unusual to have an all-time top scorers list for a nation where it's keenly contested by three players at the same time, all sort of moving around one mm. of the absolute legends of the French game, who's still very much a presence, because, of course, he's France under-21 manager. So we're talking about on OTC. So we're basically not too far away from a LeBron-Michael Jordan situation where they'll surpass it unequivocally, and then Henri will bring out the documentary. <laughs> yeah. So, so exactly. everyone will be like, oh, and actually, he was the best. So, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. yeah. Right, gentlemen, I want to turn our attention to Scotland. They travel to the Netherlands. Uh, they're playing um, this evening. Uh, now, get a load of this. 41-year-old goalkeeper Craig Gordon has been recalled to the squad. He's not appeared for Scotland since November 2022. It's Pepe-esque. Yeah, he's not going to play, though, is he? Uh, yeah, that's true. Pepe was involved in Portugal's 5-2 demolition of Sweden last night. Of course night. he was. Um, but will um, Craig Gordon play? I don't know, but... Uh, 
I don't know. Sometimes it's nice to have an older head in there, wouldn't you say, Andy? Oh, well, especially if it's Pepe's head. <laughs> <laughs> um, how are the Netherlands looking, brass man? All, all right. But the interesting thing is the return of Memphis Depay, who's of course it come is. back. Oh, well, it's always interesting. Did you see the coat he was wearing? Because um, they, when they came back into the Dutch, when they came into the Dutch camp, they had the um, the new kit in a briefcase, and they were all looking through it. And he's wearing the most outstanding like brown leather coat. Oh, it's remarkably it. good. Really, yeah. obviously, it's not the most controversial thing he's uh, done this week with his uh, public support for. Uh, Convicted drug smuggler uh, Quin- Quincy Promise. Blimey, blimey! Well, uh, to, to give Memphis the bar a fair crack of the whip, though, he did score a crucial goal for Atletico Madrid in their uh, advancement in yes. the Champions. I tell you what, he looks buff at the moment, doesn't he? When does he not? I, d- I think it's because he's one of those players who's been out injured for quite a long time. And he's clearly spent all of that time in the gym. You know, when a player is out injured quite a lot, and mm. it, it has a weirdly transformative effect on them. A little yeah. bit, a bit, a little bit like uh, Nicola Zaniola, for example. He's always had the bit. sort of grealishy thighs, hasn't he, Depay? Sort of underrated yes, that's kind true. of that calf true. monster. Yeah. Because he always, he always wears sh- really short shorts. <laughs> yeah. He's really yeah. proud of them. Well, those, those tattoos, he, he's got tattoos on his legs, hasn't he? Everywhere. He he's got a very, a very cute dog as well. If Ricardo Charisma and members of had a fight, Andy, who would you cheer on? <laughs> oh, good one. <laughs> Is it a free kick fight? No, just it's a fight to um, with, with win the... my heart. Yeah, yes, exactly. yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Who would you want to win your heart? Oh, Ricardo, hundred percent. Oh, right. Yeah, I thought mem- kick Memphis. to the head with the outside of the boat. <laughs> <laughs> Knockout. Yeah, that would be it, wouldn't it? Uh, well, okay. So, um, well, with Scotland in their sort of current trajectory, would you would you fancy them to cause a? Oh, it would be an upset, of course, against the Netherlands. Winless in five. So, yeah, I forgot about that bit of the trajectory. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's good to point out. Um, but no, I mean, they're in a fairly sort of good good moment. This is a good chance for them to test themselves against the better side. Um, now, Ronald Koeman celebrated his 61st birthday yesterday, which is lovely, I think we can all agree. He said, the players sang to me and gave me a nice cap. They obviously think that I'm at an age where I need to keep my head warm. If I could have a perfect late present, it would be the Euros on July the 14th. <laughs> like him, him, Very late. Him yeah. saying he's going to win the Euros. Dorival yeah. Junior saying mm. Brazil are going to win the World Cup. What are these guys drinking this week? Well, I don't know, Andy, but uh, but but I think, you know, if your birthday is in March... Mid July, the people have forgotten you, but too late. Yeah. Also, like, it's like wishing someone happy New Year now. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Totally. With with what footballers earn, they had a whip round and they got him a cap. Ah, oh, but you, but it could have been a gold cap. I'm, good, I'm, I'm, I'm yeah, thinking good point. Of... I didn't think of that. I didn't think of the gold cap. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, I'll get back in my box. No, I'm thinking a sort of hat FM kind of business. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. yeah, I I think that uh... that's they basically were we'll go they all arriving from around the country, all into the same airport, and then like fucking hell, we forgot what, what did we get. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I think um... a cap and a tobler, and here you go. Yeah, but they love a cap at inter- in international football, so they're just you know channeling that kind of spirit, aren't they? Right. So it was lying around. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Quickly, so just grab anything. <laughs> this looks like it's a commemorative cap of the 1974. <laughs> yeah. They'd be wearing it on the touchline like Jack Charlton at USA 94. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, Do you think he'll be wearing it so that they don't get offended that he's that he doesn't like the present? <laughs> you know, like when you get something from someone, you, you only wear it when they're around. Quite possibly. Quite possibly. McCain Williams has been in touch. Oh, we've got an email. Yeah, yeah lovely. Email Oof. towards the end of the show. How about that? He says, hello, Ramblers, specifically Marcus. You'll see why. With European club football on international break, I want to bring to light some news from US club football. The US Open Cup has started back up this season with a bit of controversy. MLS decided to only send a handful of first teams to the tournament, despite it being an American footballing tradition that started in 1914 and instead send their development team, for example, Portland Timbers 2. Here we go. For example. The the plot thickens. (laughs) On Tuesday night, Portland Timbers... Two took the pitch with <laughs> Harvey Neville in the starting eleven. Yeah, Harvey was sent off for a second yellow in the fifty-third minute, and Portland Timbers two lost two-one to El Farolito SC, an amateur team from San Francisco, who are named after a popular burrito restaurant Hello. in the area. We'd be like if Spurs under twenty ones lost to Nando's FC. So, <laughs> this is incredible. And like I've, I've looked into El Farolito FC a little bit, as I'm sure we all have if we've done our own work. Yeah. Um, and they <laughs> uh, they are 
like they're essentially an amateur team, and yeah. they, they they train a couple of times a week. Mm. Um, sometimes they can't train exactly as they want to because they get to the pl- place they've hired and someone else is there. <laughs> they travel around f- from all over the place, train after work, yeah. but they really really put the work in mm. and if they've they've um they've been handed a little bit of a present by old Fizzer Junior. Ah <laughs> oh dear he's probably jet lagged. He no, might be. You mean yeah. Yeah. time distance from you know not distance the time uh, zones from Miami to um to up in the northwest. It's a hike, isn't it? Yeah. It is, it really is, Andy. And they've shoved him in there. I think it's a bit unfair. <laughs> Apparently the El Farolito bench were chucking balls onto the pitch towards the end of the game to eat <laughs> a little bit of time. Amazing. <laughs> <laughs> not, bur- not burritos. It's yeah. Joe's and Well, they manager. respect the burrito. They're not going to throw oh, it. Oh, yeah, I suppose. Yeah. You know, the funny thing is, a burrito restaurant would probably indulge in less nepotism than Portland Timbers. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. Well, it's true. Show some fucking respect. <laughs> 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 Right, everybody, it's that time again. Dean Smith also says you're an encyclopedia of football. A what? An encyclopedia of football. I don't know what that means. Well, I do, Jack. It's now time for Jack's Encyclopedia. I'm hosting. It's not a title bout, but it's an important league match between Jim, Vish and Andy. Pointless. (laughs) <laughs> Absolutely pointless. There he is. You're not pointless. You're very much in the running for the championship. But of course, uh, the hero of the day, Luke Moore, is not here. So it's a chance for somebody to gain some ground in the league on me. Right. Uh, you all know the rules. Jackson Encyclopedia is a game of categories. Blah de blah de blah. If you're too slow, Gary never will come. Now. Um, <laughs> Let's let it's, it's a pleasure to uh, welcome Vish um, back to uh, the. It's Torres. Oh! There you go. In case you're new to this, um, <laughs> and if you're new to this, very welcome and thank you for lasting so long. Uh, unlike Gary Neville. So uh, the, <laughs> the first. Category. Stop talking about him orgasming. No, I won't. Constantly, always. And do you remember, start of the week with this. Do you remember Fizzer on the beach? Oh. Fizzer, jizzer, more like. Okay. <laughs> Vish, you're back in the uh, Jackson Encyclopedia arena. How do you feel? Fine. Orgasmic? I should think so. First category, Andy Brassel, I want you to start first. So um, get your thinking caps on. First category. This is a lovely one, and I'm gutted not to be involved. The 22 players that started for both sides in England's last win over Brazil. It ended 2-1 back in February 2013 to mark the 150th anniversary of the Football Association. Andy Brassel. Off you go. Harry Kane. It's a bad start. It's a bad start for Brassel. Way too early for Harry Kane. There's a clue. Harry Kane's not involved. <laughs> Wayne Rooney. Of course he was. Last win over Brazil is the question. 2013, Jim. 2-1 two, two, England. Come on. Oh, God, I've written down a load of players that probably weren't involved. Um, Joe Hart. Love that. Um... <laughs> Frank Lampard. Frankie Lampard, he's our mate. Did not play, <laughs> did not play. <laughs> we didn't start. He didn't start. Uh, Neymar? Is Neymar the winning answer? If this round it is, Jim gets the point. You, you could have had... <laughs> what a round. Um, Adriana Carrera, Ashley Cole, Chris Smalling, Danny Alves, Danny Welbeck, Dan Che, uh, David Luiz, uh, Gary Cahill, Glenn Johnson, Jack Wilshere, Julio Cesar, Luis Fabiano, Oscar, Paulinho, Ramirez, Ronaldinho, Stephen Gerrard, Theo Walker, or Tom Cleverley. Stephen Gerrard. A lot of guests. I'll tell you what, I'd love to see Gary Cahill play. <laughs> yeah, I bet you would, you dirty little sausage. <laughs> right, Vish, you're up first. Now... Kobe Mainu was, of course, called up this week. He's 18 years old. But which England players have made their debuts 18 years or younger? 20 answers. And again, I'm gutted I'm not involved, although I did lose on England the other week. Vish. Uh, Wayne Rooney. <laughs> Second youngest, 17 years and three months. Jim Campbell. Um, oh. It's really obvious when you've got the answers in front of I you. I bet it is, yeah. <laughs> There's one I'm hovering around, but I think it might be a sort of red herring in my own mind. Um, I'm going to say it, Theo Walcott. (laughs) Youngest. Wow. Yeah. Andy? So made their debut at 18. Specifically made their debuts 18 years or younger. 18 or younger. Okay, cool. It's Torres! Billy Wright. Who? Billy Wright. Billy Wright. Hmm. Fair guess, but a wrong one. Vitution. Michael Owen. Michael Owen is a good answer. Oh, very, very An good. obvious answer, but a good one. Um, 
Tim Campbell. You need Vish to win, Andy, right. to stay in the game. Okay. So get Jim behind him. I think Andy wants Jim to win. <laughs> Tim Campbell. Should be really obvious, shouldn't it? Mm. Um, I'm sure there's... I'm going to go for Gary Neville. Gary Neville? <laughs> odd choice. Very odd choice. I don't think it is an odd choice. He started for England very young. Mm, not young enough, though. Vish has the point. Yeah. Ah, yeah. Let me go through them. Alex Oxlade Chamberlain, Arthur Brown, <laughs> Cullum Hudson and Clement Mitchell, Duncan Edwards, Jack Wilshire, Jaden Sancho, James Princep, Jimmy Brown, Jude Bellingham, oh. Luke Shaw, mm. Marcus Rashford, Mason Greenwood, Micah Richards, Raheem Sterling, Rico Lewis, and Tot Rostron, known as Tot because he was five foot six. It's easy when you've got the answers in front of you, ladies and yeah. gentlemen. Uh, there's only a few of those I'm kicking myself over, to be honest. Oh, look, it's, it's, it's a tough old game. People don't understand what it's like when you're in the chair. Right, it's Jim 1, Vish 1, Andy Nil. Andy, you need this to go to the tiebreaker. And I think you can get it. Jim, <laughs> you're up first. Yes. Give me the host cities, not for the Euros, but for World Cup 2026. Oh, Jesus. Um, New York. Yeah, New York, New Jersey, give you that, yeah. Los Angeles. Los Angeles, the city of angels. Philadelphia? Philadelphia, you can spread it on the bread. <laughs> uh, Mexico City? Mexico City, of course. Love Monterey. To see it. Monterey, a bit of cheese. Uh, Kansas. Kansas? City. Lucky, because <laughs> Kansas is a state, my friend. Yeah, but you asked for the city. I did, not the state. People will think I'm being leaning there, but I'm watching you, Jim. Toronto? Toronto, yep. Doing very well here, chaps. He needs it. It's, it's one of two. It's Torres! Oh, Boston. Boston. Having a tea party. Washington, D.C. Washington, D.C. As if the politics would want them there. Really? Correct. Jim Campbell. Seattle? Seattle. He's got it, Andy, to stay in the game and deny Jim a big win. Oh, that's very good. Montreal. It's Torres! Montreal. Jim Campbell! Ooh, win. Big yes! win for Jim! <laughs> <laughs> and because he's not here, we've finally got a winner who's not Luke Moore. Yes! So you could have had Atlanta, home of the Olympic Games, of yeah. course. Dallas. Dallas. Guadalajara. Thought someone was going to go for Guadalajara. Houston. You where... thought someone was going to go for Guadalajara. <laughs> yeah, because Mexico City and Guadalajara are the two famous venues. Sure. Uh, yeah, okay, fine. Um, Washington, D.C., not a famous city in America, then. Not when it comes to football, <laughs> dickhead. Um, they have a football team. <laughs> Houston, where, unlike Vish, they don't have a problem. At Miami, the home of football, and San Francisco. <laughs> So there we are, everybody. San Francisco, the home of football, yeah. Jim is the winner. Vish is the loser. <laughs> Andy, you get a commemorative mug. Um, thank you very much for listening to the Football Ramble Preview Show, sponsored by Betfair, part of the Eggcast Creator Network. Do join myself, that guy Vish, and Andy tomorrow for the mailbag, where we're answering your questions questions and my goodness we've got some good ones uh, in the meantime follow us on x which uh, is really called twitter still tiktok youtube and instagram at football ramble follow us on spotify the keys are in the lock the weekend is officially open and it's an international weekend come on what more do you want say goodbye andy goodbye say goodbye vish bye say goodbye jimmy goodbye and losers bye from me <laughs> Thanks for watching a clip from the Football Ramble podcast. Don't forget to subscribe so you never miss a video. And if you're feeling extra generous, why don't you like this video? Why don't you like this video?